Have you ever sat at home after a shitty day and thought to yourself, life is meaningless, I want to burn it all down? Well, have I got the thing for you? Meet the nuke. Jock's giving you wedgies at school, nuke him. Cheerleaders calling you fat and ugly, nuke him. Don't agree with how an opposing government treats its own people. Hate their economic model built on absence of private property, social classes, and a centralization of power. Now, these small bombs can range from small cute pocket rockets to huge f off mega death machines. While you may want to just blow up your school for fun and turn anyone in proximity into goo, we need to approach the subject with a little caution because if we do a really good job, well, you know what happens. The first item we need in our recipe which will bring out all the flavors and spice of the nuke is uranium. Uranium is a radioactive element which generates a lot of power. And when we say something generates power, what we really mean is it generates heat. This heat is then converted into electricity, which is usually made by turning water into steam and then using that steam to turn turbines around that produce electricity. That's basically nuclear power plants in a nutshell. And in history, we have heaps of examples of uranium power plants generating some serious power like Chernobyl and even Fukushima. But the heat we want is 100 million degrees Celsius of pure carnage. Still with me? Okay. So firstly, what you need to do is go down to your local uranium mine and start mining. Now, let it be said that this isn't the most recommended way, as you may come out looking like a radioactive ghoul. So I personally recommend you find a stable supply of uranium from a totally legitimate businessman from Timu. Okay, so, uranium. Uranium is most commonly found in nature in its isotope form, uranium-238. What we want is uranium-235 or plutonium-239. So the second step is to enrich it. If we're going for the little boy nuke method, we want uranium-235, which is much lighter and active and we're aiming for a concentration of 90% of it in our uranium. But how do we do this? Well, let me explain it with something we all love, chocolates. Imagine we have a bag of M&Ms that have a mix of two things, peanut M&Ms and normal M&Ms. Now, as I just explained, we want 90% of the bag to be the normal red M&M uranium-235 chocolates. So what we do is we start spinning the bag of M&Ms in a machine called the centrifuge. This machine starts spinning the M&Ms really fast and the peanut M&Ms, which are heavier, start flying outside while the normal M&Ms stay in the machine. We then gather the normal M&Ms and bind them together to make enriched m and -ium. Our other option is the Fat Man Plutonium Bomb Reaction. To do this, we enrich the Uranium-238 and make Plutonium-239. Now, the easiest way to explain this is we put the Uranium-238 in a dim room with a lone proton. We turn on some smooth jazz, pour them a few glasses of wine, and hope they stick their protons together and bind to make plutonium-239, otherwise known as the sexy neutron capture process. Next is step three. It's now time to put our lab coats and our hats on and decide what reaction we want to use. Option one is fission. Fission is basically when you give this uranium or plutonium a little slap with a neutron. This gets the uranium all horny and it begins to spit. <laughs> I mean split. When these atoms split, they release electromagnetic energy, but most importantly, heat energy. This electromagnetic energy is where the radiation comes from, but we will get to that shortly. We're really packing these bombs together, so when the reactions happen, it creates a chain reaction due to the sheer amount of neutron splitting. And... Whoops, I guess I must have forgot to mention that you need a remote detonator in order to be away from the radius of the blast and the fallout. <laughs> Awkward. Okay, our second reaction option is fusion. Now a little disclaimer, fusion bombs are many times more deadly, so please consider if this is right for you. Fusion is just the reverse of fission. It is basically when nuclei combine, and it's exactly like how our sun works. To make a fusion reaction occur, we actually have to start with a fission reaction. What we aim for is for these smaller elements that are being made during the reaction reaction to bind together, and this creates even more heat than a fission bomb. To compare, the largest nuclear bomb ever tested was the Tsar bomber, which tested at 50 megatons of TNT. Now, one ton of TNT looks like this. 50 megatons of TNT, which is 50 million tons of TNT, looks like this. And please note, during the entirety of World War II, it is estimated that three megatons of TNT were dropped through all the bombs during that period. That means that this bomb is literally 16.66 times larger than all the bombs dropped between 1939 to 1945. Another crazy fact, just quickly, while we're contemplating how our existence is held by a threat of nuclear Armageddon is, the current estimated nuclear arsenal of all countries is roughly 15,000 megatons, or 15 billion 
tons of TNT. Yeah. And voila, we have a nuke. Congratulations, you did it. But wait, this doesn't look like a bomb. Well, popular to contrary belief, nukes can literally fit in a school bag. Yeah, scary. Now in history, there have been two uses of nuclear bombs in combat, in Hiroshima and Nagasaki. So you could be the lucky third. And to make it absolutely clear, those two bombs basically nuked masculinity out of the Japanese people to the point where they went from flying kamikaze planes into boats to playing Hello Kitty Adventure and marrying AI girlfriends. Lastly, let's quickly just explain what will happen to our victims. Well, if they're lucky enough to survive a nuclear blast, let's just say they're still not out of danger yet. These nuclear blasts emit high levels of ionizing radiation in short bursts, like gamma rays, x-rays, and alpha and beta particles. Now sure, this sounds awesome on paper, but this isn't X-Men, this is real life. Instead of growing Wolverine claws or being able to read people's minds, you instead start dying of radiation poisoning. While our skin blocks alpha rays and our bones block beta rays, the gamma rays are the ones that really get deep inside and start destroying our bodies. These gamma rays basically allow huge cancer cells to grow in our bodies, which cause a very, very painful death. But first, you suffer. I'm talking nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, blood diarrhea, bile diarrhea, all sorts of diarrhea. Let's just say a lot of different things are going to be falling out of you when the poisoning takes effect. You even start losing your hair, start losing body parts, and having full organ failure. And by the end, you die in a pool of your own doo-doo. And if you didn't die, well, the electromagnetic pulse from the blast would have destroyed all modern electrical infrastructure. So say bye to playing video games, watching Netflix, and jacking it to anime biddies. So yeah. That's a short video on how to build a nuke. Next time you bully little Timmy, just remember that instead of the old trick of bringing your dad's AR-15 to mow down everyone inside the cafeteria routine, Timmy was in the lab with Einstein Pepe, day in and day out, packing a carefully engineered hydrogen bomb in a guitar case to end your bullying once and for all. Oh, and end millions of other people's lives in proximity. But it would have been your fault.